Hey guys, welcome back to another week's episode of the Budget 4x4 Live. Today we're going to be installing a much needed modification on this Pajero, which is a light bar. So yes, I'm going to run you through how to install it, what it's going to look like, and um, yeah, everything you need to know. So make sure you sit back and relax and let's get into it. So basically why it took me so long uh, deciding on the light bar is because I couldn't decide between mounting one inside the grill or to go on the roof rack. So there's basically pros and cons to both. When it's inside the grill, you're obviously limited to the size that you can put in there. Um, a pro is that you're not going to get any wind noise. But another con, which is quite major to me, is when it sits quite low, it's not going to have a very high beam from the top, if that makes sense. And also, if you go through some mud, um, chances are it's going to cover the light and then it will just become useless because you'll need to come and clean it first before you can actually see anything. So... When it comes to the rooftop one, you can obviously go a bigger size. Um, the only thing that I'm concerned about is wind noise. So yes, we'll see how we go with that one. Um, but yeah, it's going to be out of the way and it's going to have a much wider spread because it is bigger and personally it's uh, at a better spot. Awesome guys. So as you can probably guess, we're going to be going with the light bar on the roof rack. I reckon that's the better choice overall. Now for today's episode, it's pretty good. Uh, Oxbeam has sponsored some light bar for me, which is a 5D Pro series, uh, which is an excellent light bar, and I'm very keen to test it out. So I'll show you guys uh, what the wiring harness looks like and the actual light bar, because it's got some pretty good things to it. So let me show you. Alrighty, so here's what you get in the box. So first up is your actual wiring harness that comes with a relay and a switch. And then next up is some nuts and bolts. So that's just to mount it to your roof rack or whatever you really want to mount it to, uh, which is pretty cool. There's quite a few different sort of brackets. So that means it's quite universal to how you want to mount your uh, light bar which is uh, very, very nice and well thought of. And then last but not least, the one that you actually want to see is the light bar. Now, look at this thing. It's uh, pretty cool. As you can see, it's got the three projectors, so it's just going to project the light further, whereas the light bar on the side, it's going to give you the spread. So this is sort of spotties as well, which is pretty great. And um, yeah, I mean, that's basically what you want is some good spread around the side so you can see everything and then some light going forward so you can see like a kilometer in front of you in case a kangaroo jumps out on the road. So yeah, that's pretty nice. And I'll um, list the specifications right here as well in case you wanna see the lux and that sort of thing. Uh, but yeah, overall, it looks like a quality light bar and I'll show you guys how to mount it right now. So let's get into it. All right, so like I just mentioned, you get two types of brackets. So the one goes on the end, so if you've got a roof rack that has like rails down the end where it can mount on, you can just use them if you wanted to stand up a bit higher. Otherwise, the other ones um, screw to the bottom of the uh, light bar, which is pretty good. So if you've got rails running down the middle and, and let's say on the other side past the light bar and there's no way to mount it with the other brackets, you can just screw these ones in take it to the place that you want to mount it and then just mount it there on the roof rack which is pretty good so yeah we're going to be doing that righto guys so we're going to start at the top so basically we're going to mount down this one make sure you align the light bar so it's in the middle of your roof rack and then what you want to do is slide the brackets just so it's in the middle of each rack or rail and then what you want to do is mark that with like a pencil or something where you're going to drill the hole um, with the other brackets I'll show you now. And then also with these bolts to mount to the light bar, what you can use is Loctite just to make sure they don't come out. Uh, just thought about it now, but anyway. So yeah, just use that. Make sure everything is nice and tight. And then use a drill and mount it down. All right, so the cool thing is it comes with these brackets um, like we just seen. So you can tilt it your way to make sure the light bar is nice and even. But I kind of don't like how high it sits. So instead, what I'm going to do 
is just bolted straight through from underneath the rail into that with some rubbers that is supplied as well in the kit and just to make sure it doesn't vibrate on the rail and then it's just going to sit nice and low because with these spaces as you can see it sits a bit high um, whereas without the spaces or the stands when it's nice and flush it's going to look very neat and tie in with the roof rack so yeah it's pretty cool that you have both options uh, but yeah let's start with the drill always remember start with a smaller drill and then go a bit bigger i think the bolts are eight mil but yeah just don't force it in um, because you don't want to drill through your roof <laughs> so yeah let's start on that side Alrighty guys, so once you have bolted down your LED bar, just make sure it's nice and tight, all the bolts are nice and tight and the actual bar is nice and steady. And um, yeah, so far it's looking great. I love the sleek look and it just looks heaps better already. All right, so moving now to the side. So as you can see, we need to tuck away this one over here. And the other reason as well is because this light bar is not really designed to be on the roof, it's mainly like on the bull bar, that sort of thing. The actual wiring is not very long. So what we're gonna do is actually cut that bit and then we're also gonna extend the wiring just so it runs into the engine bay. And the other reason as well is because I don't want this big knob on the windscreen. And um, yeah, cause that's not gonna look very nice. In addition to that, we're also gonna be using the steady um, wiring concealer. So basically how this works is this is what it looks like. Awesome. So you're basically just going to put this alongside your windscreen and then as you do that you can actually um, you know, hide all your wires. So it's just very nice and sleek if you want to grab that as well. Um, you know, it's just not going to expose any wires in case you extend something uh, which is pretty good. So I'll show you guys what that looks like. Um, but yeah, for now let's cut that wire, extend it and then we'll put this one on. So once you've chopped it off, just make sure to make it nice and clean. Grab about the same size wire and make sure it's long enough so it reaches your engine bay. And all you got to do is just solder that on. Then I'm just going to put a bit of heat, heat shrink on it. And um, after that, I'll cover it with this. And just so it's still blacked out and it goes into the wiring concealer. All right, guys, so basically after that process, what you want to do is put your wires inside the wiring concealer and make sure to clean the surface area where it's going to stick to the glass very nice. So with a glass cleaner and um, some microfiber towel. And then basically once you put your wires in, you're just going to stick it onto that and then just cut it at the top. So as you can see, that's going to look very nice and neat. Um, and then up the top, you can see I've um, used some black tubing, so that's all going to look very nice and neat as well. Make sure not to cut it too short, um, just so it all looks factory. But yeah, let's get into that. The wiring concealer can definitely be a pain in the bum to do, but just make sure you take your time and it also takes some patience to do perfectly. But as you can see, the end result looks amazing and I'm pretty stoked with how it looks. Alright guys, so for the grommet on the Bajero, this is the one that I used. Is that one there inside? Um, so basically what I did is run the wiring through from the cabin to the engine bay, not the other way around. Um, so that's nice and sealed as well. Just undo that bolt and the other one and get the wiring through, which will be fine. And then let me show you on the inside. So that's the grommet right there. So as you can see, the wiring has come through. Just lead it through to the other side and it should come out right there. So yeah, let's do the switch and then we can test if it actually works. All right guys, so last but not least, we are doing the switch. Now it does come with this sort of switch, but I'm not a massive fan of how it looks. So I went out and bought one from Nava. 
uh, well, Hydreco, but it's the Nova one. So it's just a factory looking switch that says LED light bar, so that's pretty cool. So I'm basically just gonna wire this to them. And what I bought extra is just electrical terminals. So it literally just clips onto these ones. That's all wired up. So basically you wanna make sure green and blue goes to blue, black to black, and red to white. And fingers crossed that should work. Let's hook up the battery, see if everything works first, and then we can put everything back together. All right, guys, moment of truth. At last, just make sure you make your wires as neat as possible and also mount your relay in a safe spot. The factory switch looks very neat as you can see and I'm very stoked with the overall outcome of the light bar and I reckon it looks the goods. Well guys, that brings us to the end of today's episode but thank you so much for joining in. As always, if you have any questions, make sure to pop it down below and I'll happily answer them for you. Alternatively, you can also buy a harness that connects up to your headlights so the light bar goes on when your high beams are on. Uh, at the moment, it's just on a switch, so if you tap it on, it's going on. If you tap it off, it's going off. doesn't matter whether the car is on or not. Also, I'd like to say a massive thank you to Oxbeam for sponsoring this video. Uh, make sure to check them out, guys. They sell pretty good stuff like light bars. They sell little panels for switches and that sort of thing and many for driving gear. And um, yeah, I reckon it's going to shine very bright. And I'll also show you guys at the end of this video how sharp it is at night. Um, but yeah, I reckon it's going to be very good. If you do like this sort of content, make sure to like, subscribe on the channel. Definitely means a lot to me um, because I'm putting a lot of effort into these videos. And I would appreciate it if you guys give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe to the channel. All right, guys. Have a look how sharp it is. Thank you and see you later. Bye.